In this tutorial here in PvP3, we're going to specifically be covering the follow function of timecode. I've done a separate tutorial that's going to cover the trigger behavior, and so this one is going to focus solely on follow. So in order to start off, we're going to come up here to the clock icon at the top right hand corner, and this is where we're going to set up all of our timecode options. So to start off with, we're going to need to select our audio input device, how we're getting our timecode into the program and also into the computer. So I'm going to click on the device here and I'm using a Scarlett 6i6 USB audio interface. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And next up, we're going to want to enable listening so that we can actually confirm that our timecode is coming in correctly. So I'm going to check that box. You'll see as soon as I do that, that we get our timecode values up here and this little clock has turned red, letting us know that it's currently listening for timecode. However, you'll see that we don't have these numbers moving yet because I haven't chosen the correct channel that my timecode is coming in on. So we'll go down here to the second option and we'll select the proper channel. Now my device has six audio inputs and I happen to know that my timecode is coming in on channel three. This might be different for your device, so you just need to know what channel you're sending your timecode in on. And you'll see as soon as I select channel three, that my timecode shows up here in the window and you can see those values advancing. After selecting the channel for your timecode, you're gonna to want to change the format of the timecode. And PVP3 selects multiple formats for timecode. I'm currently using 2997 frames per second, but we also support 24, 25, and 30 frames per second for that. So I'll leave 2997 checked for myself as I know that that's what I'm sending from my program into PVP3. And finally, the last option here, default behavior, as I mentioned previously, there's two options, there's follow and trigger, and I've done separate tutorials for both of these, so in this one we're going to look at follow, and then if you wanted to see more about trigger, you can find that tutorial as well. So when I select follow, you'll see that just underneath that, you get a quick description that says tracks playback with timecode and react to changes in the timecode. This means that we're not simply just triggering an individual cue to fire at a particular time, but that cue now will also react to changes in the timecode. So if you stop the timecode, then the video will stop playing back. Or if you scrub around in the timecode within the play range of your video, then you will also be scrubbing through the video as well using timecode to do that. So now that we have all of these settings set up here, we're gonna actually set up our playlist to work properly in this mode as well. So we can go ahead and click out of that window there. And then over here in my playlist area on the far left-hand side, I'm gonna right click on the name of the playlist. And then I'm gonna come down to the timing option and select timecode. You'll see as soon as I do that, I get a clock icon here on the playlist name. And I also get a clock icon way over here on the right hand side next to the cue and action view selections. This button is actually going to arm our playlist to listen to the timecode and react to those timecode changes. So currently, even though we have timecode coming in, these clips will not actually trigger because there's no time associated with them and we haven't actually armed the playlist. So let's get to the point where we're gonna arm that playlist. First off, we're going to need to switch to the action view. And when we switch to the action view, you'll notice that underneath the thumbnails for each of my media cues, I have a place to enter a timecode value. This is going to be the time that will trigger the clip to start playing. So we can click on this one and you'll see right now that my timecode is at 628. So maybe we'll put this one at 0629 and let that fire just right there at that exact minute. And maybe we'll change this one to 062850. So you'll see as I do that, that these cues have actually changed places because now they're listed in chronological order of when they're going to fire. The last thing I'll need to do is actually assign these cues to individual layers. So they're going to play out on those specific layers. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have to arm this playlist for timecode playback. And you'll see now as we progress in five seconds, we're going to be triggering this cue to layer one. And you'll see that right there. And then you'll see this cue here in just 10 seconds after that is going to fire on layer two. Now, I mentioned that we're currently using the follow behavior and that a few different things will happen when I manipulate my timecode. So I have my timecode on a second machine, but you can look at these numbers up here at the top right corner, or you can look at my cues playing back here on these two layers. So what I'm gonna do now is actually stop the timecode. So I've stopped the timecode on the second machine and you'll see that the numbers are no longer advancing as there's currently no timecode playing through right now. And both of the clips have stopped playing because I have currently stopped my timecode. If I click play again, you'll notice that both clips start playing again and my timecode is moving once more. 
So another thing to keep in mind is that both of these clips, if we click back over to the queue view for a second, you can see both of these are set to loop. So these are just going to continue looping even after they hit the end of their duration. They're just going to loop again because that's currently the behavior that they're set to. So that means as I manipulate my time code, I can scrub back through these videos in relation to their 30 second duration. So once more, I can stop it. And with the time code stopped, you'll see that both of those videos stop as well. Or I can also scrub through my time code or click to different positions in my time code. And it's going to change where those clips play back as well. So that's about it for using the time code feature in follow mode. And again, as I mentioned, we've got another tutorial that's going to cover using time code with the trigger mode as well. And you can find that and more information on PVP at www.renewedvision.com.